On this episode, we speak about eradicating stress. I am so excited to share this with you because stress is a huge hindrance to us living our very best lives. Our guest, Bernadette Henry, social worker and mental health and wellness coach, breaks down this whole idea of stress in such a way we see past its pressures and become equipped with tools that set us free. This is Life Club. I'm Tashima Jones. Welcome to Life Club. I genuinely believe personal development unlocks the door to the abundant and wonderful life we all already have. I also believe we must be intentional about seeking out that life in order to find and fulfill it. I am so grateful your journey of discovery has led you all the way here. Let's keep moving forward together. Once again, welcome to Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. My homegirl, Sunny on the Boards, is actually at home today. So we are sending good vibes and good energy to her and her family. Super excited to have you joining us. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with me. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. As promised, I'm super excited about today's guest. She is definitely an amazingly wonderful woman that I actually had the privilege of working with over the past few years. So I'm so excited to have her on air Today, we are speaking about eradicating stress. Too often, we seek ways to balance or manage stress when our goal should be to put it to rest. For many of us, it's become an idea of coping instead of genuinely living a peaceful life. Our guest for today is the amazingly, the wonderful Miss Berna Zett. Henry. Bernadette Henry is a mental health and emotional wellness coach who assists busy moms to stay in staying fit physically, mentally, and emotionally. Bernadette has almost 20 years of experience working in the field of mental health as a social worker and case manager in the shelter system throughout New York City. She is a wife, a mom of three young boys, including one with special needs, a jump rope instructor, and the founder of Make It Fun NYC, a lifestyle brand focused on helping you live your very best life, mind, body, and spirit. Make It Fun NYC has been featured in national magazines and digital media platforms. Gaining popularity with Jumping Rope, Bernadette has been featured on Dr. Oz, an Advil commercial, and a featured performer at the Tribeca ESPN Sports Film Festival. In addition to having multiple viral online videos, Bernadette teaches jump rope classes and workshops for children and adults and thoroughly enjoys serving her community. Thank you so much for being here. Please join me in welcoming Miss Bernadette Henry. Yes, thank you so, so much for inviting me here. I am so happy to be here today. Yes, and happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, we share, you know, that kindred energy, having our birthday in the same month. Before we get started, Mm -hmm. as always, you know, you have to go through the same seven, our rapid fire rounds of questions. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Woohoo! What is your favorite color? Bright green. Her, and you know what? You, <laughs> I don't know why I would have thought such a thing, but you know that is pretty much up there with my. You know, I'm learning to like light as my favorite color because it's a combination of all colors, mm-hmm. and I just want everything. But green is definitely my favorite color. <laughs> representative of energy and fun. Yes, good stuff and good energy. How do you stay healthy? I stay healthy by um, going to the gym, jumping rope and trying to manage what I eat most times and also doing things to keep me mentally sane because I think that's all a part of being physically fit. Definitely, definitely. What song best describes your life? Uh, (laughs) Which one, rather? Because it sounds like like you got a few. (laughs) It looks like you got a few. (laughs) Anything anything upbeat that explains energy, Mm. um, 
Turn down for what? There yes. you go. Turn down for <laughs> what? <laughs> and you of all people, because you do some amazing things, jumping rope with music. Like music is obviously a huge part of what you do and your life. So that's fun. And that, that song is perfect for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, when do you feel most like yourself? Um, I feel most like my, myself. Basically, I think when I'm in a space where I'm doing something good for me almost every day. I know it's mm. hard as, you know, being a mom and a wife and, you know, ha- having my ch- children and the business. It's just so many things going on. So I think I feel most like myself when I do have that opportunity. Sometimes, even if it's 30 minutes mm. to go work out, it just brings a renewed energy to That's me. That's beautiful. And I just literally had that conversation, especially as moms, you know, we don't necessarily take the time for ourselves, but then we wake up and it's like our cup is, right. our cup is empty. So that's really, really, really important. Up next, if you could go anywhere in space and time, where would it be and why? I would say somewhere to just a different country. I haven't really explored another country as of yet. So I think just going out and venturing into another culture, another mm. country, and just taking that time away from my usual surroundings, I think that that would be a good thing for me. Beautiful. What advice would you give to your younger self? The advice I would give to my younger self is to stay true to yourself at all times. Always stay true to yourself. Love yourself. Don't live your life to please others. Mm. Do what feels good to you. Always stand firm in your convictions and do so before you spread your ideas to someone else because Mm -hmm. you don't want people to sway you. You don't want to be in a position where you're feeling judged Mm -hmm. because most times when you're feeling judged, you're not going to pursue and you're going to try to live your your life making everybody else happy but yourself. That is like a whole entire show, just being authentic to yourself. And what I realize is that when you are living in your authenticity, you will effectively appease the people around you and it may not always be in the ways that they want but it'll definitely be in the ways that they need so that's that's really 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 good and then the other thing you mentioned as far as like being judged I think when you are firm in your convictions of who you are judgment is is like it doesn't it doesn't sway you it doesn't because you know who you are it's kind of like somebody walking up to you trying to tell you that your name isn't your name like you're not going to you know become boggled about that right. because you already know your truth so i told you that was a, that's a show all in itself all in itself i know <laughs> and last but not least in your own words what is the definition of life living loving enjoying being free just just mm. being carefree and just doing what you want to do mm-hmm. in spite of Mm. everything else around you that's good that's really good that that just deserves a breath (laughs) right there (laughs) thank you so much for taking part in the same seven hour rapid fire rounds of questions we're gonna dig right into the topic of conversation stress omg there's like volumes of books written on this one topic one idea one reality that we all face so just as simple as knowing what stress is will help you I truly believe in eradicating it so in your own definition or just from your studies and and your experience what is stress I think stress it's little blocks of distractions Mm. that that come about and Mm -hmm. I think that when those little blocks just become so overwhelming it just causes a bigger problem Mm -hmm. which is where like the stress is because it's it's like no matter who you are what you do you cannot avoid stress Mm. but it's the way you let the stress affect you that's good and I like that picture you gave of little blocks of distraction because I would have never thought that you would even say that but it's very true like stress definitely takes your focus away from the things that you are 
putting energy into and I don't think we really recognize it as a distraction. I think it's probably because we're so in stress right. and we're so enveloped in it that we don't recognize what it's doing to us before you know we recognize it when it's too late so just going with that whole idea of it being this form of distraction what are some triggers and is are the triggers different for different people i think it i think when dealing with stress or speaking of stress it's more about your coping mechanisms because some people they may wake up in the morning and they may be running a little late for the bus and Mm -hmm. that can like really like mess up their Mm. whole entire being you know and it could be a either they're upset that they're going to be late for work or maybe something happened in the house before they left to Mm. go to work or just the fact that they just don't like being late. So it mm-hmm. depends on the person and what really takes a person there. Because even speaking as a mom, you know, my day starts maybe at 4.45 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I do that so that I can have a little time for myself. And then I have to get the kids ready. And of course, dealing with three different personalities, I don't know what's going to happen in that mm-hmm. course of that day, which can be stressful. However, I know that this is a part of my daily day-to-day life. So it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, I have to deal with that. Then I have to leave the house. So before I've even reached work, I've had a lot of stresses in Mm -hmm. my day. But Mm -hmm. those stresses are stresses that I'm willing to deal with on a daily basis because I know that this is what the stress is going to be. So, you know, maybe I'll get to work and then the kind of people that I deal with I can either let that affect me or I can say, okay, this is just a part of my job. I love my job. I'm not going to let this bother me. Mm -hmm. After work, I may want to go to a gym, but I can't go to the gym because I have to go home and cook and get the kids ready. And that can be stress. But these are the daily stresses that I can manage. Mm -hmm. But for me, like this whole picture that I painted for you can become a huge stress If I go two and three weeks without taking out any time for myself Mm. and then I gain like five pounds. Now that can like make that stress like pop, you know, Mm -hmm. because I'm able to deal with the everyday, the routine. And then Mm -hmm. it's just once I realize, okay, look, I'm losing myself. That's that's the thing that's really stress. It makes Mm. like them little blocks of stress pop or appear bigger than really what it is. Wow. You said so much first of all you started with your day 445 and one of the key things that stood out to me was taking that time for yourself how important is it to take the time for yourself before the day even really really starts and how does that help with the other things that you come up against during the day there's so much I'm, I'm pulling I'm gonna dig in but that's just the first part Um, based on what you said so how important is it to take time for yourself and how does that help you maneuver throughout your day it's very important because I know that that time is under my control Mm. I can control that time so I know that nobody's no nobody's going to distract that time Mm -hmm. so the kids are still asleep the husband is still asleep and you know I know that If I woke up in the morning and I did my live streaming or my Instagram stories or whatever I choose to do at that time, I know that no matter what, nobody's going to interrupt it. And I already know that it happened. It got done Mm. because you just never know what's going to happen. The child may wake up. They may start vomiting or something. That was something I couldn't control. And then Mm. maybe I can't go to work because I have to take the child to the doctor. So... Um, You know, getting up earlier, it helps me get the important things done because I can't control what happens after, Mm -hmm. you know, my day officially starts. Wow, that's so, so, so good. And I'm just going to give a shout out to Sunny because that's literally been her day. Like she was at the doctor, the emergency in the emergency room with her daughter, you know, and she couldn't come here. And it's just speaking to the reality of what we go through in general and how what it sounds like is is if. A lot of stressors come from the things that you cannot control. Right. And that's really, really important for us to know because we are experiencing these day to day activities. And for some strange reason in our humanity, we believed at some point that we controlled the universe and we really don't. And I think when we allow that idea to, to be released from our thinking and from our just our being. 
we are able to accept the things that come towards us and accept that certain things are out of our control. And I think with doing that, we allow stress, we, we kind of reduce the stress because oftentimes the things we stress about are things that we think we can control. Right. And we're frustrated because we're unable to manage it, but it wasn't yours to control in the first place. Right. So just adding on that extra layer of responsibility that we truly aren't really even responsible for. The other thing that you said was the stress that may come along with certain segments of your day. Because like all moms, and you know, I'm give a shout out to dads too. Yeah. <laughs> we like, I, you know, it's funny when I'm in conversation, I'm like, okay, I'm on to my third life or on to my third, you know, part of the day. Because it's, you know, just just in one day, you can be yourself, you can be mom, you can be entrepreneur, you can be sister, you can be friend, you can be so many things. And what you said was very important about the things that come along with those uh, roles that we play throughout right. the day. Understanding that this is something that may come along with the territory of being an entrepreneur, of being an author, of, you know, running a business, of raising a family. And again, that part of acceptance and just being aware that this is part of the territory, even in that it reduces the stress because girl you done set me free this morning because I'm like all right how do I coexist in this world because honestly I like getting up early 4 a.m is my time and for me it's like when the rest of the world is asleep and it's right. just me and spirit just chilling right. <laughs> and I'm like how do I reproduce that throughout the day but part of it is really accepting that things are not you know everything is not in our own control right. accepting the reality of the things that come along with the territories that right. we coexist in and then being able to maneuver through those things right so with that being said my other question is how do you stay in a space of rest and peace when the people around us are stressed Oftentimes it has nothing to do with us. You know, you spoke about being a social worker and being you are a mental health and wellness coach. How is it that you do not take on other people's stress? I think <laughs> that I think it, it comes with time because even in dealing with um, the people that I've dealt with, I mean, currently like I work um, in the family shelter, but my history, a lot of my history is mental health, HIV, chronic illnesses. Things and, and stories that will make, a, 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 I mean, I am a normal person, mm -hmm. but that will make a normal person really, you know, shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's being able to stand firm and helping the individuals around me. And, you know, of course, when I'm working with people, whether I'm working with my coaching clients or whether I'm working with my clients at work, I have to set and create boundaries, because I have to realize I'm not a therapist, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm here as a person that just kind of listens and kind of put the situation back to them in a way, you know, of course, like I said, not in a licensed way, in a non-licensed way, but that's kind of when you pull the most out of people, when you hear the most out of people. And it's not that I'm desensitized to it. Mm. For me, I take it as a learn as learning. Mm. So I think that all of the lessons that I've learned from people, and I, and I also take it as lessons that I'm learning from other people. So when I'm listening to a client or when I'm listening to someone I'm working with, I'm actually t in, pu inputting the information and I'm looking at the possible solutions to the problem or mm -hmm. how this could uh, apply here. So for me, I take those and I just like add it to another layer of my textbook mm, of life mm, so to speak that's you good, know that's so good. like when you go to school they may not teach you these various scenarios but I'm learning from the people that I work with and um, I just you know try not to personalize it so that's mm. kind of how I separate my stresses from their stress definitely and I think um, again you know you speak with busy moms and we have the tendency to really want to nurture pretty much everybody right. that walks into our lives. And it's something that I've actually struggled with, too. And over time, I've definitely become more stable in the rest that I occupy, you know, the peace right. that I occupy, because I realized that you want to be open and nurturing to others, but you have to be mindful of that toxicity 
starting to become part of your life and right. it wouldn't even be that person trying to pour in negativity into your life but if they're in a state you know of unrest and strife it's so easy just by listening to them right. you know that you can start to take on their worries and their concerns and i really truly believe that we always have to maintain our our feet you know in, in that that space of peace so that we can truly help the people around us because it's not right. going to do them any good if we start stressing out <laughs> right over their stresses over their stresses and mm-hmm. and it's and it's funny because like you know in my professional life this is something that i've chosen to do and if i didn't mm-hmm. like it i wouldn't have done it for like mm-hmm. 20 years mm-hmm. so in my personal life i minimize that so mm. I, of course, we all have friends and of course we all go through things in life. But like if I'm speaking to a friend per se and five days a week you're talking about the same thing, Mm. I'm going to say, okay, maybe it's time for therapy or maybe I'm not the person to talk to Mm -hmm. because I get paid to do what I do. Like Mm -hmm. this is, you know, um, you know, talking to you five days for the same issue Mm -hmm. is not going to help you. Maybe you do need to seek professional help. Definitely. So sometimes these are ways that I combat taking on other people's problems. That's good. That's good. If you were just tuning in, this is Life Club with me, Tashima Jones. My homegirl, Sunny, on the boards is at home with her little princess. But I'm super excited to have Miss Bernadette Henry in the building, mental health and wellness coach. We are speaking about eradicating stress. Part of our earlier conversation was speaking about understanding the things that are out of our hands and the things that we cannot ha- we don't have control of and we can't truly manage if we don't have any control over it um and one of the the subjects that came up for me was anxiety and usually anxiety is about the future and what is to come so we've accepted the the fact that we don't have any control over certain things in our lives and a lot of times that makes us even more stressed <laughs> especially for moments to come. So how do we go about dealing with that and handling that truth? I think it's, it's it goes back to self-acceptance. I, I truly think it goes back to self-acceptance. And a prime example is someone that's about to turn 30 years old. Mm-hmm. And at 30, society says you should be married, you should have a child, mm. you should be like so well developed, de- developed in your career, you should have a house. It's so many things that society says, mm. and you're like 25, like, I'm not even dating. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> wow. You know, and mm-hmm. a lot of times you put this stress on yourself because maybe your mom is like, hey, I want a grandchild. And it's like, okay, but um, I'm not even dating. It's, it's and And even, you know, you start to look down on yourself and mm. you know it just comes to that fact of accepting your normal accepting your life accepting things as they are and it goes back to like not listening to people's judgments mm. and being confident in yourself and even for someone maybe that is established in their own way maybe they're thinking about starting their own business and they're anxious about okay is somebody going to support me how am i going to mm-hmm. fund this how how are people going to take this so you know you just become anxious and you have to be sure in yourself and say look i'm going to go after this no matter what mm-hmm. and deal with what comes as a result that's good stuff you know the part you mentioned about other people's expectations that's definitely a trigger for a lot of people, especially when it comes to family and career. You know, we do set these expectations based on some societal norm. That doesn't necessarily mean it's our norm. Right. So the key in dealing with those stressors, if you will, especially when it comes to your future, is simply looking at where you are now. And First, being okay with where you are now Mm -hmm. and being in this moment, being present and grateful for this moment, however it appears to be. And then taking that one day at a time, putting one foot in front of the other. For me, one of the ways that I dealt with the anxiety about that I have with the future is just making peace with my future, even though I wasn't even there yet. You know, it was making peace with whatever lies ahead of me and being okay with that and having the firm belief that all is well you know and I think we miss so much of the present moments and the present blessings that we have worrying about 
the future causing you know strife within our own bodies because that's the right. other thing about stress and you could speak a little bit about that what are some of the physical things that stress does to our bodies uh, it will it will destroy you so and this is a really this is a true life example like in 2017 i believe i ended up taking on a second full time job Mm -hmm. So I was working a nine to five job and then I was working like a Saturday through Tuesday from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. And it it really like physically, mentally, it nearly took me out. And I Mm. did this for a year. So I was sleeping three nights a week. Mm. I was going like two days a week. I was going from one job to the next. And things got so bad. I gained like 30 pounds. Mm. I was on three high blood pressure medications. I was going to the doctor for this test and that test. It was just so much on me, but I had to do it, you know, to take care of the family. But after a while I said, you know what, it's just not worth it anymore. Mm. You know, things are just going to have to be the way they are. And I finally made a decision to quit one of the jobs. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that stress could have really took me out. And people used to say, Bernadette, how did you even do it? Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? I just had to keep a positive outlook on life, you know, at that time. And that's the only thing that kept me through. So what was life like after you chose to walk away from something that caused you that much stress? Because that's the other thing. We don't we never get to that point because we're afraid of what's going to happen after that right. point. So what was life like after making that decision? It was, uh, I had to make a lot of adjustments because, like I said, I took on the second job just to fill some necessities. I had to make a lot of adjustments. Mm -hmm. I I then went and lost at least 10 of the pounds that I gained. Wow. Um, Wow. I got down, I'm back down to like one medication, Mm. you know, and I just have a better peace of mind. And I've since then started a new brand, Mm. you know, so I had to do you know, a lot of things, you know, the other way mm. and take a backseat instead of trying to take the easier way out, just doing something that's harder, but less stressful. That's to a me. beautiful thing. And we're going to speak a little bit more about that brand. Right. Right. Um, but one of the things I wanted to or a few of the things I wanted to piggyback on from what you said, if you are looking for a weight loss diet plan, let go of some of your stress. That's yes. what it sounds like to me. <laughs> it's true. It, uh, stress put on 30 pounds in a whole year. So that's one of the things. Again, oftentimes we don't have to add to our lives. A lot of times we have to let go of the things that we're Mm -hmm. holding on to to really fully flourish and live that very best life that is existing for us. I think sometimes it's like if we're lacking something, we think we have to add something. But oftentimes you got to let go of some stuff so that you can increase. So that's a beautiful thing. And I think it's so uh, reassuring that when you decided uh, to let go of that thing that caused that much stress, life got better. Yes, it did. It didn't go downhill. It actually went up. So that's another thing that we have to recognize that sometimes we just got to empty a few loads to mm-hmm. really experience the very thing that we are working so hard to obtain. So thank you so much for giving us a little peek inside <laughs> of your personal experience. Now, uh, this new brand, what is it about? And tell us a little bit more. Well, basically, I am a mental health and an emotional wellness coach, certified Mm -hmm. life coach. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And even in working with you, you told me your purpose is in you. Mm. So it's now things are starting to I'm starting to, you know, build up things, you know, slowly but surely. But I think this is something that's been in the works my whole life. Mm. It was just a matter of coming to that point in my life where I was ready to take it on and have been through enough therapy or have been through enough coaching or have been through enough, you know, getting ready to get me to where I am today to take on this new brand that is so beautiful (laughs) omg that is so beautiful and oftentimes the things that we go through in life is all preparation for us to teach and to share with other people so i'm super excited for you now talk to us more about a few workshops that you have going on um and and the purpose behind them so um april is national autism awareness month and earlier in this broadcast i believe i did mention that i do have a son that's autistic Mm -hmm. and um in light of that i am doing a lot of work with moms that 
whose child were, was newly diagnosed with autism mm -hmm. because, you know, that's a very stressful time for moms. A lot of moms are not expecting that to happen. A lot of moms are expecting their children to be normal and to just have this awesome life. So, mm -hmm. you know, in the future, they maybe want their child to get married, have children. And when, you know, a doctor says, hey, your child is autistic, you're thinking, okay, what kind of future is my child going to have? What kind of future am I going to have? You know, what, what, what is this life? And you're mm -hmm. angry about it. And you're like, why, why me? You know, why mm. not somebody else? Or you start to feel guilty. Like, what did I do? I mean, did I have a glass of wine while I was pregnant? Mm. Like, you know, it's just so many feelings that a mom has. And a lot of these feelings that or stresses that moms go through prevents them from opening their eyes to the reality of their child's diagnosis and not getting their child the help that they need. Definitely. So when you say newly diagnosed, how... What's that time span like? Actually, it takes a while for a mom to even get over it. Okay. Because a lot of times, you know, children can be diagnosed with autism as early as 18 months. Okay. So it depends on the severity of a child's autism. Mm -hmm. So if a child is highly functioning autistic, it's really not going to show its head until like maybe three or four. Okay. If a child is lower functioning, it may show its head earlier, like 18 months. And... Um, and just describe, like, what is autism? Like, what is it? Um, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times children may have, you know, speech delay or they may have, um, it, it's just, it just varies for different children. And okay. this is why it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. So they have the low end of the spectrum and then they have a higher end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And my son, he actually, he falls on the high end of the spectrum. So he was denied early intervention services because he was so smart. They didn't detect it. So with him, you know, it came out maybe when he was like three, four. Because a lot of times the behaviors in a higher functioning autistic child, it still may appear like toddler-like behaviors. Okay. So like the tantruming, mm -hmm. which is called meltdown in the autistic world. It's not a tantrum. But things like that, that makes you start to wonder, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And when a mom comes to terms with it, what is that process like? I know you mentioned certain things about guilt. Does denial have anything to do with it? What are some it of does. the experiences and the emotions that a mom or parent in general may experience? Yeah, when, when it's all new, a mom, they're going to go through a lot of negative emotions, which is normal. Okay. It's normal because you weren't expecting this. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you have to kind of change your life in the beginning because you're trying to figure out what is this that my child has? What treatment is there? And then you still have to manage your child's behaviors mm -hmm. because your child is behaving in such a way and you don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then the school's not helping you or your family's not supportive. So you're kind of in this world alone, totally alone. Mm -hmm. You don't know what to do. And I think that this period lasts for, it, it, it could take se like several months up to several years for a mom to really get over it. Wow. And a lot of times I went through that but I didn't realize it at the time until, mm. like, I'll look back on Facebook memories on something I posted. And it's like, wow, I was really going through denial and anger and grief and guilt. But you're so busy. Once you start to accept, you're so busy trying to get your child to help that you forget about your feelings. Mm -hmm. So what is the point of acceptance? What does that look like? And how can somebody get there sooner? I think that the point of acceptance really is when you've accepted, when you're fully accepted. Like, you, of course, you have to work through these feelings. Mm -hmm. But I think the true point of acceptance is when you're like, okay, this, this is our life. And you can live life. You're not ashamed of your child. Mm -hmm. You're not ashamed of yourself. And you're mm -hmm. out there fighting and advocating for your child. I think that's when you truly accept it. Definitely. So just recognizing that... Your child is your child. Right. And I think that's the key, you know, is understanding that regardless of the issue at hand, this is still life that you co-created, you know. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in stigmas and cultural mm -hmm. judgment. And I think that's a huge part of accepting it is the fear and the shame that comes with Having a child who may, and I don't like, uh, I don't like using the word normal or not normal. Right. But just having a child who learns differently, who, who engages with the world differently. Um, a lot of that comes, you know, the, a lot of that stress and that shame comes from society. Yes, it does. You know, so just focusing on the child, understanding that 
okay, so this my child, this child is going to do something so amazing, far beyond what the culture expects versus it being a sense of shame and guilt. So once you get to acceptance and then you start I'm advocating for this whole this whole like idea of autism, what are some of the other ways that you can support and help yourself oftentimes caregivers need caregivers right and one of the things you said is that you know sometimes you kind of get so caught up in nurturing and and pushing and moving forward that you forget about your mental state and your health what are some ways that a mom who is raising a child with autism or any other issue they can still maintain the sense of peace within themselves i think you know record first of all recognizing that this is your child Mm -hmm. and not trying to be the teacher at school or the speech therapist or the Mm. vocational counselor at school. You just have to realize that you're still a mom. And sometimes moms may have one autistic child, but then they may have other children that Mm. are neurotypical. They may have a husband. So in your household, you just have to, in keeping your child's development in mind, you have to run your house in such a way that it balances out for everyone. Mm. And once you find a sense of balance, and it's possible, you can, because me at home, I'm not looking at my son as my son with autism. Mm. I kind of know what triggers him, what doesn't trigger him, so I just make lifestyle accordingly. So if I know he likes to sit in the green chair rather than the blue chair, the green chair is always going to be there and available. Mm. You know, if I try to make him sit in the blue chair, I know like all hell might break loose. (laughs) So It's a matter of once you fully accept managing your household around what's going on. Because at the end of the day, I'm my child's mom. I'm Mm -hmm. not his speech therapist. I'm not his teacher. I'm not there to do, you know, he has those services in place. I don't have to do those services. Mm -hmm. I'll work in conjunction with them, but I'm not going to be them Mm -hmm. at home. That's good. So just knowing your role can save your your life. Yes. That's really good. And the the one thing you said is just like not being consumed with the issue at hand, but just organizing life so that it can it can is an open space for everybody involved and not forgetting the other parts of who you are. That's a beautiful thing. I think you just saved a few lives, girl. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. So where can everybody stay connected with you and to get more information about everything that you're doing? You can find me at um, Bernadette T. Henry dot com. On on my my website, on Instagram, Bernadette T. Henry, and on Facebook, uh, facebook facebook.com backslash burnapool20. Awesome. And I wanted to just ask, like, one piece of advice that you would want to leave our listeners with. (laughs) I kind of threw that out there. I I know. (laughs) (laughs) I felt the strong energy to just ask that question. (laughs) I would say to... Like I always preach, accept yourself, Mm. be accepting of yourself, be sure of yourself and do not let other people's stresses or other people's judgments or other people's criticism. Don't take them to heart. Whatever you do, it's not going to be an easy road. Mm. You're going to have to work and work really hard. Mm. So just because, for example, I quit the second job. Yes, it was easy to sit somewhere and just sit there and, and, and at the end of the eight hours, get a check at the end of the week. Mm-hmm. Fulfilling my life's purpose through coaching, mm-hmm. it's going to take a little more work than just sitting there and then collecting a check. Mm-hmm. It's going to take more work. However, it's my purpose to help other people and it brings me joy and it brings me peace. So you have to do what's for you no matter what the societal norms are. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much You're welcome. for being here with us. We have just wrapped another installment of Life Club with Tashima Jones and my homegirl, Bernadette Henry, yes. mental health and wellness coach. And to you all, thank you so much for rocking with me. Thank you so much for listening in on WHCR as well as the many countries that we have reached with our podcast. You can find me at Tashima Jones. Com. All of my social media and contact information can be found there. Until next time, remember your greatness. Talk soon. I am Tashima Jones, and you've been listening to Life Club. Thank you for tuning in.